Hey, it's Shay from the future while I am editing this video. I just wanted to let you know that I will be popping in periodically to explain some things because as you will see towards the end of this video, I start to film less and less and that's because this trip it started to go downhill. Let's just say that. A lot of things happened to the point where I completely stopped filming because I was so overwhelmed with everything that started happening because you will see exactly what I mean by the end. Watching this back, I see how naive I was in the beginning. I was so excited for a peaceful, relaxing trip. But recently I've just had really terrible luck. You will see me future Shay, editing Shay, towards the end when I have to explain the rest of what happened when I wasn't filming anymore. Okay, back to the video. Hi, welcome to or back to my channel. My name is Shay. Today I have a very exciting video. I am traveling to Elba Island today and I'm super excited because I've heard really good things about this island and I'm also really in need of a beach trip. It's the end of May so the weather is starting to get better and hopefully this will be like my start of the summer season. I'm taking the train. So I take the train from Bologna and then I have two switches. So I switch in Florence and Pisa and then I go to Piombino and then I take a ferry from there to the island. So it's going to be kind of a long travel day. I'm not really looking forward to it, but by this afternoon, hopefully I will be on the beach enjoying the beautiful weather. So I just have to get through this rough travel day. I'm like <laughs> already hot. It's already hot in Bologna and I just know it's going to be a little bit difficult, but I'm very excited for this trip and I hope that you guys enjoy. It is a solo trip, so that's kind of also why I wanted to take you along because when I travel solo, it's nice to record it for memories, but also it makes me feel less alone if I feel like I'm sharing it with someone else. So let's go to the train station. Okay, first I wanted to show you the backpack that I bought on Amazon because I've been wanting a travel backpack and I liked it on Amazon because it was like, oh, it's gray, and then it has like pink accents. But honestly, I feel, first of all, look how big it is. I mean, I have a lot of stuff in there, but like, this is so large. Okay, they were like, yeah, it's gray with the pink accents. I was like, that's cute. Honestly, I feel like it looks kind of purple in person. And I feel like, I feel like it's giving Dora. <laughs> is it? Do I look like Dora the Explorer? I just know when I get on the bus today, I'm gonna be like hitting people. I always accident, I'm like, sorry, excuse me. <laughs> just like blasting me. <laughs> but I like to travel with a backpack because having like a rolly suitcase is just, just don't do that. In Europe or in Italy, just try to do a backpack if you, anyways, let's go. so sweaty and tired <laughs> i had to take three separate trains and then also the ferry and i'm just like so exhausted uh but i finally made it i made it to my room it is truly nothing special but i didn't have a lot of options also i'm kind of sad i wanted to get some sort of like sea view even though i didn't book specifically an ocean view this is my view <laughs> literally like scaffolding but i did get a view of the beach that's right like downstairs on my way up here because this is kind of like up on a little hill and the water is so the water looks so beautiful it's so clear so i want to head down there right now i asked at the front desk and they aren't renting out like the uh sun beds or umbrellas yet not until june 1st which i realize now that if you wanted to come before june they don't really have basically the i feel like the island doesn't really like really go into season or open up until june which is frustrating because i'm literally here at the very very end of may so i'm like what's the real difference but I get it. Um, but I did ask her, I was like, well, can I still access the beach? And she said, yeah, just, you know, don't use the towels from the bathroom, but I already brought my own towel, so we're good. So after I put up, I unpack and like chill out for a second, I wanna go down to the beach because that's what I've been dying to do. I just wanna go to the beach. I also am a little hungry because I wasn't able to eat lunch during all the chaos of all the different trains. So I might try to get some food, but it's, it's that unfortunate time where like nothing is open in Italy to get food. <laughs> I might just have some snacks or something, but I really am just dying to get to the beach. So even if I'm hungry, whatever, I think tonight I just wanna have a nice dinner, like seafood, pasta or something would be so good. So I might just hold out for tonight and see how it goes. <laughs> Literally so sweaty. Okay, let's do a quick overview of the room. 
This is what it looks like when you first walk in. Interesting color choices. But there's the wardrobe, which I'm a person who I like to hang up all of my clothes. Recently I started doing that and now, I don't know, I just like it also. So I can see everything and make sure everything doesn't get wrinkled and it doesn't take that long to put it away afterwards anyway, so it's fine. I have this little window here of that lovely view of the scaffolding. <laughs> uh, a tiny TV, which I definitely won't be using. Uh, and then little like desk and random stuff mirror. And then the tiniest bathroom ever. <laughs> like literally it's so small, but it's fine. The shower is so small. I would say everything seems very like dated, but it's fine because I'm really not even paying that much for this place. As you saw, that beach was absolutely stunning. The water was crystal clear. I went down to the part of the beach that was basically like if you're part of the hotel, but they didn't, she said they didn't have like the bed set up, but there were some people using them. So I think there's just some that they grabbed. There was literally only four or five other people at the beach, which was amazing because it was not crowded at all. And honestly, I mean, I got there, it was like four or 5 p.m. So people obviously were probably had been there for most of the day and were leaving. So there was one point where I was literally the only one there, <laughs> but it was pretty nice. The water was very, very cold. I didn't expect it to be super warm uh, yet at this time of year, but it kind of just feels like in California when, you know, the water there is like always cold. <laughs> so at first it feels cold, but I was able to get in because, you know, like you get used to it after a little bit. I would have stayed longer, but I'm just so hungry. It was hard because I tried to read for a little bit. I read like one page and then I tried to just like be on my phone or I tried to just sunbathe and like not do anything. And I literally could not sit there for too long because my mind is just so fixated on food. I'm so hungry. So I did find a place that is open. I'm gonna be a weirdo in Italy and try to go eat dinner at 6 p.m. But like I said, I'm just way too hungry and I think my plan for today is to just have dinner early <laughs> and maybe explore a little bit of the town uh, and then come back and just honestly like make it an early night because I have a whole bunch of plans for the next coming days. I really need to get some food and so that is where we're headed now. got back from dinner it was weird because I was like it was me and, and like two other people in the restaurant because no one eats at this time at like 6 30 <laughs> but I ended up getting this pasta with like salmon sauce actually it was pretty good I really like salmon it was a little salty and it was there was so much and it was like really rich I definitely want to get some more like seafood pasta while I'm here because I know like salmon <laughs> it's not like they're catching wild salmon out here in this ocean <laughs> But I don't know, I just love salmon and it looked good and I was like, I would, I want to go to like a nicer place to get like actually good seafood somewhere. So I'm saving that for later on, like maybe tomorrow night when I have more time to choose a place and I'm like not trying to just find something that's open at 6 p.m. I'm just going to take a shower and probably chill for the rest of the night and just save up my energy because tomorrow's going to be a busy day, Saturday is going to be a busy day, and then we'll just see how it goes. But for now, that was my first day. <laughs> my first afternoon, okay, it wasn't a full day. But so far, very cute town. I like it a lot. The people are very nice it definitely has the feel of like it being off season because it feels very quiet there's really not a lot going on there's not a ton of people like all the restaurants are empty there's not even like a lot of people doing aperitivo or something so let's shower because it feels so gross <laughs> first at like 5 45 a.m because i didn't really sleep well literally i woke up hearing like mosquitoes in my face and like near my ears the whole night so then i <laughs> slept like after 5 45 i put the sheet just like over my whole body and slept like that i woke up around 7 15 i originally had my alarm set for 8 but it's a good thing i was awake because literally housekeeping came in at 7 30 in the morning 
7.30 in the morning. She didn't even knock first. They fully opened the door and, was like, and we're like, but so I was like, I just feel like that's pretty early for housekeeping. It's not like I'm some person who's sleeping in until noon, like 7.30, 7.30. Kind of crazy to me. <laughs> Anyways, this hotel every day is just getting worse and worse, but whatever, it's fine. I'm gonna be out of the hotel for like basically the whole day. But then the lady at the front desk yesterday told me that my like key card will, I need to be like recharged today at like noon. I was like, what does that mean? Like, how come you can't just activate my key <laughs> for the whole time I'm here? I don't know, it's the weirdest thing. So I'm like, is that gonna be something that happens every day? Like, it's really weird. So I guess when I get back, I'll just bring it to the front desk and reactivate it. I don't, again, I don't know. <laughs> for now, I am going to get ready. Bathing suit on. And I think honestly just head back straight from breakfast because I'm worried that when I go down to breakfast someone's going to be in here cleaning anyway, so. We are attempting to head to Capoglianco Beach. I heard it's really beautiful and it's supposedly like a 10 minute walk from my hotel. We'll see if that's true. <laughs> Luckily there is like a little, the tiniest little pedestrian area, like a mini sidewalk. When I first looked at Google Maps, it didn't look like there was anything. So I'm glad there's at least something, even if it's small, slathered up in sunscreen because I don't want to get burned. Just a little tan. But let's see, I'm really excited because I heard this beach is super beautiful. I also bought swim shoes, real cute. <laughs> because it's a rocky beach in Italy here. There are so many rocky beaches, not as many sandy beaches. So if you wanna come to Italy for the beaches, I highly recommend getting some sort of like swim aqua shoes because the rocks really can hurt your feet. probably because it's nine o'clock in the morning but that's fine i get to choose the best spot so literally the only one here right now it's so beautiful i guess it is like nine in the morning but i can choose a good spot and also the sun isn't too harsh right now so it won't burn <laughs> look how beautiful it is how cute is this little look <laughs> I think it's a good spot because it's kind of like in the shade, out of the shade. I mean, the sun's coming over the rock, so finally I'll get some sun. For now, Capo Bianco, all to myself. It's actually super, super beautiful. The water is so clear. There's no um, seaweed or anything, so. back to the room from lunch. I wanted to come back because my phone is at like 5% and I need to charge it. And I also wanted to get out of the sun for a little bit, even though, honestly, like I'm not burned at all. I definitely did very well with my sunscreen, but I hope that I also got some sort of tan because I feel like just nothing happened, <laughs> but we'll see, I guess. Lunch was not great. The restaurant had weird vibes, but I feel like a lot of the touristy places right near the water are just kind of like that. Like, so I guess it ex I expected it. It was also very expensive for no reason. And then when I got back here, I had to do that thing with my key where I had to recharge it because I tried the door and it just like went red when I tried to use the key. So I go down to the lobby and there's two men there. I wish it was the woman from yesterday because she would have understood. But there's like one man there and I tell him, I explain to him in Italian what happened. He grabs another guy and the other guy comes up and he's like, what? And he's like, wait, like the key doesn't work, but, but how long are you staying here? I was like, until Monday. And he was like, but why, why doesn't it work? I was like, I don't know. I have no idea why the lady told me today I had to come back and recharge it. Like, I don't know why she didn't just charge it for the whole, I have no idea, but it was like they acted so confused and I was like, does this not normally happen? Why didn't the woman charge it until Monday? Like, I don't know. <laughs> this hotel, really. Anyways, I'm gonna chill and stay out of the sun for a little bit and charge my phone. And then I think I might just go out later in the afternoon at the 
beach right here so I don't have to go too far because then later what I wanted to do this evening was go explore. There's Forte Falcone, which is like an old fortress that you can explore. I think it's like five euros to get in and there's a whole bunch of walls and you can get really pretty views of the city from up there. And apparently there's a bar or like a little restaurant up at the top where you can do aperitivo. So I want to kind of time it where it'll be kind of like sunsetty time because I think that would be fun to do tonight. But right now I'm just going to relax, stay out of the sun for a little bit, hydrate and get back out there. <laughs> I don't know about you, but do y'all ever go to the beach and you're like, hmm, okay, I look kind of cute. But then when you get back, it's like, oh. I went down to the beach. It was super, super pretty. I went in the water again. So I'm going to chill out for a little bit. And then I think I'm going to go to the grocery store because I think I just want to do like my own little picnic-y type dinner tonight. I think probably bring like some food and wine out to like this little terrace area. Like, or like a little lookout spot and watch the sunset. So that's my agenda for the rest of the day. It's still only like 3 p.m. So I still have a lot of the day left. Like I said, I wanted to go check out that fortress this evening and also explore some of the other part of the city that I haven't seen yet. So, still plenty to do. I just took quite the nap. That was not planned, but I was so tired. You know, after a day of being on the beach and the sun and you're just like, hmm. It was honestly such a great nap. <laughs> What's happening with my hair right now? I probably won't be making it to the grocery store today, but that is fine because I have time tomorrow to go before my boat trip. Right now, I'm just getting ready. I wanna head to the fortress because it's gonna close in like an hour and a half, but I really don't think it takes more than like 30, 40 minutes to walk around. So I just wanna go head over there and see some nice views. I don't know if this hair is like, my hair has been under a hat all day and it's just like, oh my God. So that should be nice. And then like I said, there's that bar at the top. I can get a drink and maybe just get some food. I wonder how much food they have, because honestly, I might just try to make that my dinner, because I don't want to go out again and keep spending <laughs> so much money on like mediocre pasta. For now, I need to wake up, because like after that nap, <laughs> I'm so tired. And then we'll go explore some more of the city. I made it all the way up here too. The fortress um, and I went to buy a ticket but the guy at the counter was like mm, I don't really know if an hour is enough and honestly when he showed me a map I think he's right it's a very huge it's way bigger than I thought and then I was like oh well is there the bar like that you can access and he was like with a ticket it's like okay I mean that makes sense <laughs> so I think I might just try to come tomorrow when I have more time because it actually does look pretty cool like I think the views will be nice um, and so maybe I'll try to do my plan for today either tomorrow or Sunday probably tomorrow I'll be way too tired to do anything after my boat trip, but at least it's a nice view from the top. nothing more than to turn on the AC right now just a little bit because it's so hot and humid even with the window open I get like no airflow in here so I'm dying also you can probably tell morale is low I got a drink and it was very nice and I was watching the port and all the boats and I was like wow this is so nice I have enough time let's go to the grocery store and get some stuff I went to two places that Google Maps told me there were grocery stores and they were not very close like there weren't really a lot of options both of them just didn't exist I got there and I was like there's just literally nothing here. The first one was leading me to some really weird like industrial looking part and I was like, what is happening? There was barely a sidewalk. I was like, I feel like this is only really for cars. I don't know why Google Maps is telling me to go here. So I gave up on that one because I didn't see anything. And then I tried another one and I ended up in a neighborhood. Like where it said the Conad was, it was just neighborhood, it was just apartments. Like what am I missing here? <laughs> like unless someone has a grocery store in their apartment, like what is happening? I'm frustrated because I walked around for basically like 45 minutes for nothing. But I think what I'm gonna have to do is just get like a pizza to go because I really just don't want to sit in another restaurant by myself. It's fine. I'm not a person who cares that much. But after a while, I'm kind of just like, I don't want to sit in a restaurant again by myself. Like I just, I think I'm just gonna order a pizza to go somewhere and then just sit down here on the beach and eat it and chill and watch the sunset. Like that sounds perfect. <laughs> that sounds great. 
<sighs> and then I'm gonna come back here and try to get a good sleep because last night I really did not sleep well. So I need a good sleep because I have my boat trip tomorrow. I need to hydrate. I've been so thirsty. Oh my god, I think because I'm sweating so much. Anyways, let's go, let's go try to get some pizza. <laughs> I get my pizza. I open it up. It definitely was the lady on the phone who gave me my pizza. I didn't check it when I was there because it's like, who's gonna mess up a buffalo pizza? Let me show you. What is that? You know what this is? Rucola. You'd think that, okay, okay. Maybe she heard rucola instead of buffalo. Makes sense. But on the phone, she literally repeated back to me, buffalo. I heard it, I heard, I heard it. She repeated it back to me. So maybe when she got off the phone, she was like, wait, shit, did she say buffalo or, or rucola? I don't know. I don't know. But I really feel like this woman had it out for me. Also, it is not cut. Do I have a knife here? Do I have any? No. I'm gonna eat this pizza like a sane person just ripping it off. <laughs> or just fold it all together. I mean, good thing I like arugula, but like... Why? Let's hope tomorrow goes better. It doesn't get better. I'm literally dying. I can't. I can't with this day anymore. I'm gonna eat my pizza. Shower. Hopefully I feel better soon. <laughs> I mean, in the end, it's fine. I got my pizza. Like, it's all... I'm gonna laugh about this later. So here I am. I've been watching shows. I'm super tired and I'm probably gonna go to sleep soon. But I'm trying to figure out what I want to do tomorrow because I have my boat tour or my like boat trip which I'm very very excited about. But that's not until four but I do have to take a bus to a city that's basically on the other side of the island and that bus is around like one. So I have to figure out what I want to do beforehand. I don't know I haven't done solo traveling in a long time. Now that I do have like so many people in my life here, like friends and my boyfriend and people that I do want to travel with at some point, it's like I, I solo traveled a lot when I first got here because I didn't know a lot of people so it was fun to just travel by myself. But now I wish I had these people with me because like I want to share these experiences with the people who are important to me and with the people who I know I would have fun with. So it's a little hard but I think a tip from me if you're solo traveling is to book experiences or excursions like the boat tour that I'm doing or like you know kayaking paddle boarding if you're going somewhere like beachy or summery whatever like summer water activities like that or cooking class or there's vineyard tours you can tour wineries and do like wine tastings I would definitely recommend doing something like that Unfortunately, sometimes they don't allow just solo people, which is so sad. I <laughs> hope you enjoyed the first full day here. I know I did. <laughs> Except for all the stuff with the, the pizza, how I broke my sunglasses. Oh, I'm so mad. I, I'm honestly so mad that I sat on my sunglasses. Like, I just bought them. I just bought them a few days ago, and I really like them. So I have to go back to H&M and get another pair because I really love them. Good thing is they were super cheap. I never buy expensive sunglasses for this very reason. Other pair of sunglasses I have are these sunglasses that I bought years ago at a gas station in New Mexico. So they're super cheap and like talk about, you know, like losing glasses, sitting on them. Nothing has ever happened to these glasses ever and I've had them for years. And then I buy this other pair that again was not expensive but like after a few days I already ruined them. Like, okay, <laughs> that's life. I'm gonna go to bed now. Night. I'm back. As you saw, I went to another beach this morning and I almost didn't go because I thought, oh, it'll probably look exactly like the other beach I went to yesterday, but this one was very beautiful. I'm really happy that I went. Also, the water was so calm and I brought my goggles, so I went swimming. And then there's kind of like little reef areas with a bunch of fish. It was fun to like swim around, which was good because honestly, I woke up in kind of like a negative mindset. I don't know. I was really feeling down this morning, but I had breakfast and then I went to that beach and honestly, it was so relaxing and I felt so good going for a swim. Now, I came back to the room early because one, I want to charge my phone because I really don't want to be stranded on the other side of the island without a charged phone. I should have brought a portable charger, which another tip if you're solo traveling or just traveling in general, bring a portable charger because my phone cannot hold a charge like at all. But I forgot mine. I have one, I forgot it. Okay, change of plans. 
As I'm about to head out the door, my phone rings, and I noticed that this number tried to call me yesterday too. I hate picking up the phone in Italian because I'm so terrified, but I said, you know what? Maybe this, like, I feel like it might be the boat company or something important because obviously they tried to call me yesterday. So I answered the phone. It is the boat company. And I was like, okay, I feel like I know what's happening. Luckily, fully able to understand him. No problem. He said that today they did not have enough people. Just me. I was the only one who booked. But they said that they're doing a full day trip tomorrow. And I said, oh, okay, like I wanted to do that, but I was worried because I'm in Porto Ferraio and I don't know about if there's a bus early enough. And he said, yeah, yeah, there's a bus that leaves, uh, that will get here around nine, which is perfect because we leave at 9.30. And so I'm glad that I talked to him too, because he knows that I'm coming. So if there's an issue, like, I don't know, the bus is a little late or whatever, like hopefully I can figure it out. He was super, super nice. And I originally booked just for the three hour trip today. So I think he's just gonna let me do the full day one tomorrow. Cause it sounds like there's more people tomorrow. So that'd be fun. But now I'm like, what do I do the rest of the day? I think I might switch my plan because originally tomorrow I was gonna try to go to Porto Azzurro, but I think maybe today I might try to go in the afternoon. Either way, I should get a bus ticket today because tomorrow I'm gonna have to leave early in the morning. Elisa picked up the phone. did not go as planned. Got on a bus and it was filled with a bunch of high schoolers and I was like, mm, this seems kind of weird, but I had read somewhere that there was a bus that kind of goes like when the high school gets out. I got on it and it went the wrong way. It went to Capoliveri. The bus driver was like, oh, I'll drop you off somewhere close so you can walk to Porto Azzurro. He dropped me off in this place with this road that literally was like, there was no sidewalk. Finally made it, but I had to take a taxi that was 20 euros for a taxi ride that was like two minutes. Now I'm gonna take a bus back soon. Hopefully this day gets better, but right now it's rough. At least this walk is nice, this view is nice. That's it. That's literally all the footage I have. Because once we went into this cave, I'll show you the picture. Super beautiful. Very excited to go into this cave. It was our last swim stop. So I was like, yep, I'm going in the water. The boat driver got us as close as he could to the cave, but honestly couldn't get too close because it was really shallow. So he anchored the boat and then we had to swim to the cave. So I'm swimming, I'm like, oh, this is so fun. Like this boat trip has been so exciting. I start swimming around the cave and I have like my goggles so I can see all the really pretty like rocks and the fish and everything. And I'm just like, oh my God, this is so magical. I'm not in the cave for more than, I don't know, five seconds before all of a sudden I feel what feels just like knives in my arm. Like it literally felt like I thought I was bit by something. Like it just felt like this burning like slash. Like it just, I literally, I really thought I was gonna look over and see like an eel or something like bit me. I was like, what the hell? I look over and out of the corner of my 
eye, I see a jellyfish, which like, I don't know why I wasn't even considering the fact that there could be jellyfish. Like my brain just forgot that like, oh, you know, there could be jellyfish here. I didn't get a good look at it. Everyone asked me after like, oh, well, did you see it? Like what kind was it? I have no idea. I saw the outline in my peripheral of a jellyfish, like with the long tentacles. It was like kind of clear. I don't know, but I could not give you a good description. I genuinely don't know. Once I saw it, I just like booked it out of there. I was the only one that got stung. No one else, even though everyone else was swimming in the cave, no one else got stung. No one else, just me. They told me that the best thing was just to like keep the, the sea water on it because you're not supposed to put like regular, like natural water on it right away because it could release more venom. I don't know. It was stinging, like I swam over, there were kind of some rocks near the opening of the cave where people were like, just kind of like sitting and taking a rest instead of swimming all the way back to the boat. So I like <laughs> make my way over to these rocks and like pull myself up on the rocks to look at my arm to see like what really happened. And I had like three distinct red lines where you could see like the tentacles had got me. Luckily the marks have faded by now, but I'm also filming this like three weeks after that because for a while they still were really red. I will put a picture up uh, of a picture that I sent like my friends. You can't see super well, but you can see that it was like really raised and irritated. Um, and it was like that for a few days after and it was like itching and stinging. The boat ride back to the dock <laughs> was very painful because at that point my arm was like burning and it kind of also felt like numb. I had had a nice trip on the boat, but I was just like, oh my God, of course this is what happened to me. So I get back to the port and of course the next bus to head back to where I was staying literally wasn't until two hours. And at this point, like I had to go to the bathroom. I was hungry. I was so tired. As you saw in the video, like I had to take a taxi to that side of the island. And so I wasn't about to take another expensive taxi. I was like, I will wait for the bus because the bus is like one euro instead of 40 for a taxi. So I just like sat on the beach there with my arm burning, hating life. Finally made it back to where I was staying. I think I remember, oh, I did finally find a grocery store. So I got some food because I was just like, there's no way. I just want to go to the room and just relax. Nothing else interesting that day. The next day, so I got up, I did go to the beach one last time in the morning just for like an hour and a half because I wanted to enjoy the beach downstairs. There was literally no one else on the beach that early in the morning, so it was very nice. Got breakfast at the hotel and then had to leave my room around like 11, uh, but I think I left around 10.30 because there wasn't really much more for me to do. So then my ferry wasn't until 12.45. So I went to a coffee shop and was literally sitting in there for like an hour and a half. I mean, I ordered something obviously, but I felt kind of weird that I was sitting there for so long. Finally, I took my ferry back. This is where things go really terribly. I get to Piombino, which is where I have my train. My first of four trains. I get to Piombino. Keep in mind, this station is so small. There's only like one platform. So I see the little screen. And next to my train, it says C-A-N. And I was like, what is that? What does that mean? It means canceled. My train was canceled. My first of four trains was canceled. And I was like, we're all like, cool. There's a bunch of people on the platform that are looking at each other like, Okay, what are we supposed to do? Also because this station is so small, there's not like an office where someone is working. There's not a person to help us. I don't wanna buy all new tickets. I already spent a lot of money on these tickets and I don't wanna have to buy all new tickets for four more trains, especially because of knowing Italy and like the whole train system, I probably won't get a refund. Or if I do, it would be just for the first canceled train, which literally was like a five minute train ride. <laughs> I am very determined to not have to buy new tickets. I decide to get on this train, which the next train is coming an hour later. So already even more delayed. We are going to a station called Campiglia Meritima, something like that. Honestly, I could be wrong, I can't remember, but it was a very short ride. It was something where it was like, I wanna say 10 to 15 minutes. Because basically now my strategy is to just follow the route that I was supposed to take anyways. Try my best to get back home to Bologna because I, I did find a ticket that just in case I had to buy one kind of followed a similar route. But anyways, I get to Campiglia Meritima. I look on the board for the next train that's going to Pisa because that's where I would have gone next. I see a bunch of people on my train getting on that train and I'm kind of like, I'm really worried because I think, okay, do I buy a new ticket at this point or like risk getting a fine that would be way higher anyway, you know? The train is about to leave in like two minutes and I'm like, okay, I have to make a decision, I have to make a decision. I finally found a worker standing outside the train and I show him my phone and I'm like explaining to him what happened. And he's like, no, this is not the right train. I was like, sir, I know, like, I know this is not the right, right train. I'm not asking that. I'm explaining to you that I missed the train. This is the train I'm supposed to be on. 
because the train line app like shows you like a, a nice kind of like visual of like the train and your progress you know my progress shows that i'm already on the train that left like an hour and a half ago so then i explained i was like no, no no i missed my first one so now i miss this one and i will miss all the ones after that and he's like okay fine just like get on this train so i get on and i figure it's okay because this was a regional train and usually there's a little bit of like leeway i guess when it comes to regional trains because you don't have assigned seats and i think there is some sort of window where as long as the train is going the same way you can go on a train within like a certain window. I don't know how long that time is, but 90 minutes, maybe more, like two hours or something, I don't know. Luckily, no one was checking tickets on this train anyway. So I get to Pisa. I'm like, okay, we're making our way. Pisa was literally insane. There were people just like running around everywhere. I heard announcements where they were constantly changing the platform numbers of where trains were coming in. It was just like insane. So I was like, what is happening? I go to the main uh, area and I see the board just like canceled 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 like a bunch of trains are canceled So something was obviously happening and later I did find out there was like some sort of air like mechanical failure or something on the line from like Florence Bologna uh, Milan like basically down that whole line there was like either a train failure or something So I'm in Pisa and I look at the board and I try to figure out okay What's the next train that I can try to get on there was a few different options and I was really like okay again I have to make a quick decision I had to wait in Pisa for a little bit for the next one And again, I tried to find someone to ask like is this okay to get on this train because again I had another regional one so I figured it was fine and at this point I was so tired and so annoyed so I was like if anyone gives me like shit for this i'm just gonna be like you know what i bought my tickets it's not my fault that my train was canceled and i missed all the ones after it finally get on a train heading towards florence because that was my next stop again no one checked tickets this train was packed i genuinely think because so many other people's trains were messed up at this point that like they just let anyone get on the trains because it was a mess like seriously i've never seen pisa centrale like that much of a mess. Finally, I get to Florence. I'm checking on my phone while I'm on this other train, like upcoming trains going to Bologna from Florence because I just wanna know like if I need to rush, if I need to hurry to get onto another train. But this one I was worried about because a lot of the trains that go from Florence to Bologna are like Freccia Rossa or other trains where you have assigned seats. And I know for a fact they really are, like they really check your tickets on those trains. So I didn't want to get fined and I was like, I don't know if I can risk, like I don't think I could talk my way out of this one if I just like board a train. So I go to the customer service uh, area and it's packed with like a ton of people and I see that the train I'm trying to take to Bologna leaves in like less than 10 minutes and the next one isn't for a while and I was like please like, I just want to go home and also I don't know if you don't know basically the trains from Florence to Bologna are like 35 minutes maybe 40 like it's a very it's a quick trip so at this point I'm like I just want to get home there's a guy who sees me kind of like looking at the line and I take a number and he asked what I needed explain my situation again. At this point, I've explained my situation so many times, like I have it down. And he's like, okay, see that guy over there? Like there was another small customer service desk. He was like, go over to my colleague over there, explain what happened. He can try to get you on the train like ASAP. I was like, okay, thanks so much. I'm not running over. I get to this guy, he's so nice. I was, I explained to him, I showed him my phone again with like all the like red canceled or like missed trains. I explained to him and I'm showing him all the trains that I missed after. And he just looks at my phone and he's like, like he feels so bad for me. It was so funny. He was immediately like, okay, I got you. He like makes a call. I'm sitting there like <laughs> just furiously typing away. I was like, I don't think he's like, do you want business class? I was like, sir, I don't care. I don't care if I'm riding on the top of the train. Like I just want to get back to Bologna. But he was super nice. He gave me like a business class seat or whatever. And he hands me my ticket. He looks at the platform. He's like, platform nine, platform nine. Like you have like two minutes. He was like, run basically. I like snatch up my ticket. I was like, thank you so much. Run, I'm like sweating to get on the train. Finally make it on the train. I have a seat. Everything is fine. The lady comes to check my ticket. By the time I get to Bologna, I'm so exhausted. And it has been a total of eight hours of traveling. I left Elba earlier that day and I got home around 9.30. Literally exhausted. I ordered food when I got home. I was really looking forward to having a very relaxing beach trip and it was just not that. And I think that sometimes I try to do too much when I solo travel. Like when I solo travel, I should probably just stick to one area because trying to take buses all over an island and like coordinate different things all by myself is a little too much. Especially when it was the low season and there weren't that many buses to begin with. So lesson learned, hopefully I can go back to Elba one day and actually have a nice relaxing time. I will say it was a very beautiful island. I did love the beaches that I saw. It was fantastic. 
but it, there was just so many little things along the way that just made the trip incredibly stressful. That was the story. I'm sorry I did not continue recording, but as you can probably imagine, I was way too stressed to even think about taking out my camera. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. I will definitely be making some more videos soon. I have some other travels coming up, including a trip to Sicily in July, so I'm hoping to also make a video there. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you all again very soon. Bye.